like your scarf. Is that real silk? Oh, um, yeah, it is. Uh, I got it in Thailand. Do you want to get coffee? That'd be great. Okay. Hey everyone, welcome to the next episode of Clarinet's Cats and Coffee. Okay, that's really hot. So the theme of the week for me was just relaxing. Just trying to relax when I play, relax with everything, relax when I practice, relax my breathing. And I'm really excited that you guys actually voted for the left hand work because I needed to get out of this like get out of this funk and do something kind of like exciting and fun. And so I had the idea to just do the next Shalomo exercise in the close say book. I know, big surprise. Well, it just it just happened to be out on my stand again all week. Um, and I was like, I should I should do that. But let's let's see what you guys want, you know? So anyway, um I think it'll be a lot of fun to work on. Um but yeah, so kind of funny. A few years ago, um, or a number of years ago, I actually had a student, and I've had students over the years have problems with this, but um, the kid, like, would play with the, the claw, like, doing one of these things, and honestly, I don't know how they were able to play, like, such fast technique, but they would complain about, like, hand and arm pain, and so... By the time they had actually started studying with me, it was already pretty late in the game for them. Uh, they they had already played for years and years, kind of like that, and uh, it was it would take a lot of very deliberate practice to really break that habit. Um, so oh, after maybe a, a very short amount of time of studying with me, while the student was practicing hard and they were like working hard to try to you know, break this habit and they were going home every lesson with like little tips and things and like they were really bumping up their practice game. I mean, practicing two, three hours a day and this is not like a college music major. This is like normal kid in suburban America, right? So anyway, so they really bumped up their game and they ended up getting tendonitis in their hands. So. They had to actually quit playing clarinet for, I think, a couple of weeks and then kind of ease back into it uh, a couple weeks after that. And it was pretty traumatizing for for the student. And, um, you know, I felt really bad for them, but, uh, it, you know, it was just it was just a bad habit that they had picked up early in life. And, you know, the longer you go with a habit, the harder it gets to break it you know so anyway um so we did we did a bunch of like vade make them uh jean jean type stuff i was like really not into close at the time and so i found like a bunch of other little exercises to do and they're doing pretty well now uh sometimes the claw likes to creep back but um you know success story they are now going to college and gonna major in music and they're you know one of um you know one of the top students in the studio so they worked really hard but it was scary for a while because obviously when clarinet is such a big part of your life and it and you can't play for a while um you know it can be worrisome but anyway um long story short i'm really proud of them for for kind of breaking through this habit because it's really hard to break. Everybody's hands are different, right? And I'm a six foot tall woman and I have very large hands. Like they look very slender and delicate and like dainty and everything, but they're very long. My hands, my fingers, right? So when I play, um, you can see the self portrait of my hands from high school back there, you know? So uh my hands were rather large right so anyway um they've they've been this way for a long time and at the time in high school it was like it was like really hard to actually like control the the muscles in my hand so i was like really bad at this stuff for a long time i try to encourage students to find a position where when you press down on the tone hole your knuckle doesn't invert like 
you know, like this, right? So you want to find a position where when you press down, your fingers can create a very good seal around the tone hole, but it doesn't invert the knuckle. Other people go the opposite way and you know they find that that point but they go a little bit too far and they actually do the claw. I don't know how they do this but they must like just not have fingernails but some I have seen some people do the claw where it's like the tip of their finger digging into the tone holes. Um, that is like just painful doing that <laughs> right right then anyway so you want to find find a happy medium look at how you naturally hold like a cup or a glass or something and you know your hand just kind of right if you were to grab a cup like this your hand would go all the way around in this kind of natural sort of c shape or you could imagine having um a ball having like a little ball like a little stress ball i've got this little tiger dude you know, something like this, you know. So that's a really good position. You know, you can take that and you know that you're going to be able to press. And lastly, you want to rely on the muscles, right? Like these part of your fingers, I don't think that your fingers actually have muscles. I think they're tendons and they're like controlled by the muscles back here. So I think a lot of people, you know, if you, if you try doing the claw, you're gonna be lifting from back here still, right? I guess you can look and see my hand just kind of activating here, right, when I'm doing the claw. And when you do that though, you're also creating a lot of unnecessary tension here and that can cause a lot of pain, right? So I like to say, okay, well, how do you naturally move your fingers, right? So um, if you were to move them very freely, you know, wiggle your hands, wiggle your fingers, you would probably mostly move this joint right here. So the same could be said from your right hand. And if you haven't done my right hand exercise from a few weeks ago, you should check it out. Okay, so you're lifting from, from the back, from the bigger part of your muscles, allowing your fingers to move freely. And then you just find that position to put your hands in when you play your instrument. So you should be able to wiggle your fingers very, very freely. This is an awkward position, but you should be able to wiggle your fingers very freely when you play, right? And so you have to be able to press down in the key and lift without a lot of tension or pain and it should be very precise. This exercise from the Closet book, it's another one that I think is really great for coordinating the lifting muscles of the hand and the squeezing muscles of the hand. And every once in a while, it'll throw in, oops, it'll throw in a little right hand coordination, a left and right hand coordination thing as well. Now, when I start out playing this, I'm gonna do it Eighth note equals 80, just to kind of think about where my fingers are hitting and how I'm going to go about doing this and make sure I get the melody. Then I'm gonna start at 60 BPMs on the metronome and just go up two clicks at a time until I'm up to 120. So today, um, I think I'm going to actually film myself doing the whole practice session so you guys can kind of see how it goes. And it would be awesome if you guys could play along with me. It's really a lot of fun. And this kind of, again, Alberti bass type stuff is just, it's so silly. So have fun playing it with me. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and change my camera angle and everything really quick uh, so you guys can see my hands completely while I play.
All right, guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. Um, I just want to give a shout out to my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome in just being there for me and, and keeping me going. I want to thank all of you who voted on today's video content. Um, I think I'm going to probably do more things like that. It's a lot of fun and it helps me kind of know what you guys want to see. And, and lastly, um, for those of you who don't already know, I have a Patreon and you can be one of my biggest fans and head over and add a little $3 tip to the Cali Clarinet channel tip jar. Um, these videos um, are, you know, really great for the music education community or, well, at least I hope so. Um, I'm putting it out there for the music education community to help kids and people and clarinet players all over be excited and inspired to practice. So thank you so much for everything you're doing and please consider being part of the Patreon community. Lastly, if you can't, that's okay. Just watching the videos, playing along with the videos, commenting, sharing your thoughts, it really means a lot and it brings a lot to the community here and I appreciate that as well. So thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, share this with your friends, leave a comment below, and as always, happy practicing!